comment on my new one. Seven minutes to get out of here. You like your rule. Mainland and convicted Nobel Peace Laureate. Footage could be intercepted. Ignoring privacy settings in a social network account. Personal data could be exposed. Don't use free public Wi-Fi recklessly. Delete preferred networks after you. Change online password regularly. Be smart with password security. And this morning, the president inspected troops the Chinese People's Liberation Army garrison in Hong Kong. As Adam Xu reports, it was the largest military inspection in the SAR's history. On the second day of his Hong Kong trip, President Xi, who is also chairman of the Central Military Commission, inspected the troops stationed in the city. At the request of the garrison's commander, Xi began reviewing over 3,100 soldiers in 20 blocks selected from the garrison. The scale is larger than ever, said the PLA. They were lined up along a runway at Shekong Barracks, an army camp of British troops before the handover. Starting with the ground forces, then naval and air forces. She went on to inspect 17 out of platoons, including female troops and special troops. All units are served by soldiers drawn from the mainland's army under an annual rotation system. While the Hong Kong garrison serves primarily as a symbol of China's sovereignty over the city, the troops are well equipped ready to be deployed for defense, security, or disaster relief missions when the situation is deemed beyond the control of the SAR government. It's the fifth military inspection of the PLA Hong Kong garrison since the 1997 handover, this time by a president known for his close ties with the army, his resolve to remake the military forces, and his willingness to flex the country's military muscles. Adam Xu, TVB News. The president also took time to meet with different sectors of society, from local youth to business leaders. Rachel Lung has the details. Accompanied by Chief Executive Lin Chen Ying, President Xi Jinping met with some 200 people from various sectors of the Convention and Exhibition Center in Wan Chai, including incoming Chief Executive Carrie Lam, Tycoon Li Ka Xing, and Lu Chi Wu of the Galaxy Entertainment Group. It took the president a few minutes to personally greet the lineup of Hong Kong's movers and shakers. Lawmakers past and present were also at the gathering. In a short speech, she thanked the various sectors for their contributions to the city over the years. Earlier today, the president was joined by Secretary for Security Lai Tong Kwok and Police Commissioner Stephen Lowe at the Junior Police Call Permitted Activity Center and Integrated Youth Training Camp in Pak Hong. He was briefed on the aim of the facilities and concept of the camp, which is built to enhance the JPC and youth work by providing discipline, physical and team building training for youths. He stopped for a brief chat with some of the members. <laughs> Call on them to obey the law and grasp opportunities to contribute to the city. Rachel Lang, TVB News. While the president was inspecting the troops, his wife took center stage at an elderly care facility. <laughs> this 
This old lady certainly knows how to pack a punch. So impressed was the first lady, she even switched to greeting the elderly in Cantonese. As with yesterday's kindergarten visit, reporters were not given access to cover Pan Migran's tour of the elderly care center in Wong Chukang. Government footage showed her interacting with residents and staff there, accompanied by chief executive's wife, Regina Lo, deputy director of the central government's liaison office in the SA in Xiaojing, and government officials, Peng was briefed on the latest technologies in elderly care. All smiles from elders who made pop-up cards with the state leader's wife. After receiving drawings from the group, Peng wished them good health, happiness and longevity. But she wasn't as vocal to local reporters who were kept at a distance from the elderly care centre. Lam Chen Ying is ending his five-year term as chief executive by awarding Hong Kong's top honours to the highest number of recipients since 1997. But as Anne-Marie Sin reports, critics have slammed the list as nothing more than a political reward system. Another piece of paperwork to get out of the way for Lan Chen Ying on his last day as CE, the 2017 honours list. And it includes 12 of his supporters being awarded the city's highest honour of the Grand Bohemia Medal. That's the highest number of awards since 1997 under Tung Chi Hua's government. Chief Secretary for Administration Matthew Zhang, Secretary for Development Paul Chan and Justice Secretary Rimsky Yun get a medal. As do Executive Councillors Laura Cha, Arthur Lee, Fanny Law and the DAB Yip Kwok Him. In a nod to those in the business sector who supported him, Soi On Group Chairman Vincent Blow, New World Development Chairman Henry Cheng, Four Seas Group Founder Stephen Tai, Airport Authority Chairman Jack So, and Han Lung Properties Chairman Ronnie Chan all received top honours. Leung awarded Hong Kong's second highest honour, the Gold Bohemia Star, to 25 people, including Education Secretary Eddie Ong, Health Chief Koei Mat. Secretary for Innovation and Technology Nicholas Yang, Civil Service Head Clement Chung, Labour and Welfare Secretary Stephen Hsu, and Development Chief Eric Ma. Also getting the same award is Exco member Chung Chi Kong, Director of Audit David Sun, Import and Export Sector Lawmaker Wong Ting Kwong, LegCo's Finance Committee Chairman Chan Kim Paul, Electoral Affairs Commission Chairman Barnabas Fung, and Commission on Youth Head Lao Ming Wai. Firefighter Yao Xu Ming, who died while trying to rescue two hikers in Man Shan Country Park in March, was awarded a posthumous gold medal for bravery. Anne-Marie Sim, TVB News. And turning overseas now, South Korea's new leader reassured U.S. President Donald Trump that he will coordinate closely with Washington when it comes to the North Korean nuclear threat. Moon Jae-in made clear he is serious about dealing with his rogue nation neighbor, despite being a long-term advocate of engagement with the North. Alan Bookney has more. Moon Jae-in's four-day visit to Washington is his first overseas trip since taking office on May 10th. The leaders began two days of meetings over a formal dinner last night, starting with a bit of levity from Moon. <laughs> discussing with our people some of the complexities of North Korea and trade and other things and we'll be discussing them all uh, as we progress and it could be very well late into the evening. Thank you. Trump wants to build ties with the important new leader in the region as he grows frustrated that his relationship with President Xi Jinping has not led to stronger action to rein in North Korea. Both men have an interest in building a strong relationship, but some tensions could puncture that effort. Moon has taken a wary stance with the new missile defense system the U.S. deployed in South Korea in March. While he said he won't reevaluate the previous administration's decision, he said his move to postpone full deployment of the system to conduct an environmental review was just following domestic law. Trump, meanwhile, has been critical of a five-year-old trade deal with Seoul that he's called horrible. America's trade deficit with South Korea has more than doubled since it took effect in 2012. Trump has said if he can't renegotiate it, he'll tear it up. 
Alan Bruckney at TVB News. The United States has blacklisted a small Chinese bank it accuses of illicit dealing with North Korea. The U.S. Treasury Department said the bank of Dangdong is a primary money laundering concern. This bank has served as a gateway for North Korea to access the U.S. and international financial systems, facilitating millions of dollars of transactions for companies involved in North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. The United States will not stand for such action. This will require U.S. banks to ensure that the Bank of Dandong does not access the U.S. financial system directly or indirectly through other foreign banks. Trash talk U.S. President Donald Trump and he'll dish it right back. Only this time, critics say he went too far when he attacked a female journalist. Sonia Otero reports. Trump launched a Twitter attack against two of his harshest critics on MSNBC's Morning Joe show, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Well, he's covering his hands here because they're dizzy. He doesn't know his own positions on a health care bill that he's passing. He, he seems confused. So Trump slammed the anchors, tweeting... How come low IQ, crazy Mika, along with Psycho Joe, came to Mar-a-Lago three nights in a row around New Year's Eve and insisted on joining me? She was bleeding badly from a facelift. I said no. Democrats lined up to complain that attacking a woman's intelligence and looks is beneath the office of the presidency. That really saddens me because it is so beneath the dignity of the president of the United States to engage in such behavior. Time and time again, this president is showing his blatant sexism and disrespect for women, as well as the press. I want to tell my daughters that uh, no man has any right ever to treat you the way the president uh, has tried to treat people with his tweets. As GOP lawmakers took to Twitter to express outrage, the leading Republican called Trump's outburst inappropriate. Obviously, I don't see that as an appropriate comment. I think, look, what we're trying to do around here is improve the tone, the civility of the debate, uh, and this obviously doesn't help do that. The White House insists Trump has a right to defend himself by fighting fire with fire. The president has been uh, attacked mercilessly on personal accounts by members on that program. The things they say, utterly stupid, personality disorder, mentally ill, but he's not going to sit back and be attacked by the liberal media, Hollywood elites, and when they hit him, he's going to hit back. The attack comes as the first lady leads an anti-bullying campaign. Critics say her husband should be first in line for lessons. And the first lady has said... Our culture has gotten to me. To the first lady, I would say, please talk to your husband. <laughs> Sonia Artero, TBB News. British Prime Minister Theresa May narrowly avoided defeat in Parliament as lawmakers voted to back her policy program by a slender margin. Still, the result will have done little to reassure May, whose authority to push her agenda and negotiate Brexit has been undermined by her loss of a parliamentary majority. Tony Sabine reports. In a sign of the continued weakness of British Prime Minister Theresa May, a policy programme outlined in the Queen's speech only passed with a slender parliamentary majority. The House of Commons voted by 323 to 309 to approve last week's Queen's speech, which laid down the British government's agenda for the next two years. The slimmed down package got rid of several policy pledges made by the Conservatives before Britain's June 8th election, which saw May's party stripped of its parliamentary majority. To force her and the Tories to make a desperate alliance with Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party, something which Conservatives are uneasy about. I can barely put into words my anger at the deal my party has done with the DUP. Yeah. To do it. What is Groby about money being put into the infrastructure in Northern Ireland to promote jobs, money going into the health service in Northern Ireland, money going into the education service? What's Groby about that? In a sign of the government's fragile hold on power, ministers were forced into a major concession hours before the vote. Fearing defeat on an opposition amendment, the government promised it would pay for from Northern Ireland to travel to England for abortions. 
Abortion is banned in Northern Ireland unless a woman's life or mental health is in danger. May called June's snap election in an attempt to boost her majority and strengthen her authority during talks on Britain's departure from the European Union. Instead, it has left her weakened at home and abroad and tipped Parliament into a new era of deal-making, compromise and concessions. Tony Sabine, TVB News. And a look at tomorrow's weather. Hot, sunny periods during the day, but with a few showers and temperatures of up to 32 degrees. And that's the news. Thanks for watching. Good night.